that's been tough on me, and it just happened, game seven was Friday night, and what's worse, the, the gentleman, my colleague who sits right next to me, the office next to me, was born and raised in Boston, and before the series, he'd walk into my office and say, you know, you guys are going down, uh, Boston's going to beat you guys, and sure enough, it was a great series, uh, but we lost, then we lost on Friday, last Friday, so Memorial Day, we come in to work on Tuesday, and he comes in and says, I told you we'd beat you. And by the way, your baseball team is now behind us as well. The Red Sox. <laughs> uh, so Boston, I don't know, it's been kind of tough on me. And then I had to fly here uh, and talk here in Boston. So whatever. All right. We're going to talk about uh, campaign process. We'll look at planning, execution, and measurement. And with my presentation, I'm really going to focus in on measurement. Uh, the measurement of the campaigns. I'm going to get into some details. So if you like math, you like measurement, you're going to enjoy it. Now, the campaign I'm going to refer to is called a Life Changes Campaign. Um, it's a book of business campaign. The, the design there is lead generation. Uh, so how did it all start? Life insurance uh, market manager calls me up and says, Patrick, I need to do a campaign. I want to generate some life insurance leads for our agents. Um, so get that started up. So I assign a program manager. Uh, the purpose is to generate leads and we have a creative strategy and a list strategy. Uh, the life insurance manager tells me, you know, I'd like to emphasize company strength in a direct mail letter. I'd also like to emphasize, you know, something that's safe that can go out to a lot of clients and will work. So we go with the life changes approach. Um, the compliance department think that's a, thinks that's a safe approach. The list strategy was to go to all the clients of about 800 agents who have something in common which I've sworn to secrecy, I can't reveal, but there's agents who have something that's very similar. We apply some standard suppressions, and the client wanted to mail before the end of May. So we did mail on April 29th of last year. A little deeper on the creative execution. Uh, this is how we execute campaigns in our Tampa operation. Um, we create a, get a creative brief going. Uh, the program manager will create that that's based on the requirements from the life insurance market manager. Uh, we give the creative brief, uh, we give the approval of the brief from the client, and then we give the instructions to the copywriter in Tampa. Copywriter writes the copy, it gets approved by several people, including compliance, myself, the client. Uh, then we put it in layout. We we'll put the New York Life logo on the letter, get it nice and formatted, and that goes for the same amount of approvals. And finally, the artwork and the letter shop instructions go to the letter shop, we get personalization proofs from the letter shop. We approve those. That can take two or three rounds. Now we have a letter and a campaign that is ready to go. We still need a list. We have to execute and build a list. The list um, is a group of agent IDs. So we know which agents qualify for this campaign. So we pull the whole book of business for these 800 agents. And we use our, our database, our data processing vendor, which also happens to be in Boston. Um, they pull all the clients uh, for the campaign and apply the standard suppressions. There's HIPAA suppressions, there's some clients who say never mail me, so we suppress them, and there's some agents who say don't mail any of my clients. I don't want the home office involved in mailing my clients. So we do that, create the mail file, and send it to the letter shop. But there's more for, for measurement. We have something called a pre-fill file, which is essentially a mail file. It has all the information on the mail file, but we use it to track sales and to measure the value of campaign. So the pre-fill has um, a control number, which is a unique number for all of the clients mailed in the campaign. There's about 72,000 clients who were mailed. They all have a control number, a source code, you know, their name, address, phone, etc., and their agent information for each of those clients. The pre-fill is loaded into something called a sales capture process, which is unique for, our, for New York Life, and I'll get to that a little later, how the sales capture process works. But on this pre-fill file, it does have 72,000 clients, but it also has 4,400 clients who were not mailed, but they qualified for the campaign. This is our holdout control set, and I'll talk more about how we create the global control uh, non-mailed cell a little later. And finally, this is a key point, and it's probably pretty standard, but it's, it could be the most important part of the campaign. We provide a list of clients mailed to all the, the 800 agents. We let them know we're going to mail these clients on this date, April 29th, 
and you give them a script, a phone script to follow up the mailing, and they're supposed to call and say, did you get my letter? Um, and you know, follow up and try to make appointments that way. They shouldn't just wait around hoping that leads come in their inbox. They should proactively uh, call the client list. Okay. Uh, leads tracking. How many leads did we generate from this campaign? Well, 229 that we know of. And that's a 0.3% response rate for leads divided by circulation. We'd like that to be higher, uh, but part of this slide will explain uh, a part of this. Uh, the types of leads, they come in on a business reply card, a tear off on the bottom of the letter. There's also an 800 number that's printed on the letter, and then there's a landing page. So. If I get this piece of mail at home, I can, you know, take the letter to my computer, log on, go to the landing page and reply that I want my agent to call me. And that's how we define a lead. It's somebody who raises their hand and said, I want my agent to call me about life insurance, annuities, or some other financial need. You can see the business reply card. This is pretty standard on our campaigns. We get about 85 to 90% of all the leads that come back via the tear-off business reply card about 10% for the 800 number. But what I, want, what I want to point out is that we also print the agent's name and the agent's phone number on the letter. And we cannot track the number of leads in which the client just calls their agent directly. So that's the question mark. You know, we generated 229 leads that we know of, but there could be a lot more. You know, if I got a letter from my agent, I might just call them directly instead of going through the home office. This is the, the lead process at New York Life. You know, all these leads come into our Tampa operation, and you know, they're business reply cards, inbound leads, outbound leads, landing page leads, and they're entered into a lead capture system by a control number. It's a 10 digit number, and it, when they type in the control number, all the information about this person, the 72,000 people that are mailed, pops up on the screen their name, their phone number, their source code. And so they can, there's less chance of data entry here. So the lead is then routed to what we call the portal contact system. It's the agent's CRM system. It's also the lead management system. The lead is routed directly to the agent. So they can go and get their leads every morning, see how many leads they have, who they are. They can accept or reject the lead in the system. I don't know why they would ever reject a lead, because uh, it's a great sales opportunity. And then they contact their leads, and they can disposition what happens with the leads. You know, did I make an appointment with this lead? Did I make a sale with this lead? Unfortunately, lots of agents don't like uh, dispositioning leads. They have no incentive or requirement to do it. So maybe about 20% disposition their leads. 